Sí. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to our weekly review of how religion impacts humanity. This week's headlines. Riots verging on civil war have been occurring in Israel between the faith-based communities there. In Iran, a gay man was brutally beheaded by his family as an honour killing. Blasts near a school in Kabul leave more than 50 dead. A Hindu girl was forced to go back to her Muslim husband. The Anglican Church is to consider removing or altering slavery monuments. It's been announced in the Queen's speech that conversion therapy will be banned in England and Wales after a public consultation. A new UK bill proposes to replace compulsory worship with inclusive assemblies. As airstrikes and rocket fire continue across Israel and Gaza, towns with mixed Jewish and Muslim populations have been struck by some of the worst communal violence that Israel has seen in years. Late on Wednesday, a mob of far-right Israelis dragged a man they thought was an Arab from his car and beat him until he lay on the ground motionless and bloodied. Some viewers may find this Guardian video disturbing. Ali Reza Fazeli Monfared was reportedly murdered by his brother and cousins on Tuesday after they discovered the Iranian military had exempted him from service because of sexual depravities. At around 7pm on Tuesday evening, Ali Reza spoke to his mother on the phone for the last time, his best friend Ajil Abiyat told Iran Wire. Shortly afterwards, his half-brother arrived at Ali Reza's residence and said their father needed to see him. Ali Reza was taken by car to the village of Burumi, near the capital of Arvaz, 
where his brother and cousins murdered and beheaded him before dumping his body by a tree. Ali Reza had been planning to flee Iran and join his boyfriend as a refugee in Turkey before his death. His partner, activist Ajil Bayat, told Iranian LGBT Plus Network Six Rang that the killers called Ali Reza's mother directly after the murder and told her where to find his body. Ali Reza's mother was hospitalised with shock following the murder, Bayat said. He later told Radio Zamane that Ali Reza's killers have been arrested. Same-sex sexual conduct is illegal in Iran and can be punishable by death or life imprisonment and any display of LGBT plus identity is strongly condemned. This video of a happy Ali Reza shortly before his killing was shared by British Iranian comedian Shapi Korsandi. <laughs> In a terrorist blast near a school in Kabul, Afghanistan, more than 50 people were killed, most of them girls and young women, according to Tariq Aryan, a spokesman for the Afghan Interior Ministry. The death toll may in fact be over 80. A car bomb and at least two other blasts were detonated near the school gates, just as the girls and young women were streaming out, says Sharifa Danishjo, an 11th grader wounded in the blast. The explosions are believed to have been caused by a car bomb and two improvised explosive devices planted in the area. I heard the sound of the blast, then everyone started running and screaming, said Danisha. I ran back towards the school because my sister was still in the class, but then another blast happened. I saw a friend who was with me, but half her body was not there from her waist down. Danisha says she then fainted. No group has claimed responsibility, but ISIS militants have launched similar attacks in the same area of Kabul, which is overwhelmingly Hazara, an ethnic minority that is overwhelmingly Shiite in a country that is predominantly Sunni. As her father fusses over her, Tahira, a wounded 17-year-old, says she's got a message for other Afghan girls. Don't bow down to this oppression. Continue school. She's going back too, she insists, as soon as she can. Pakistan, shown in green on this map, is a repeating source of religious atrocities. Watch Harris Sultan on the latest example. Fifteen days ago, this woman was abducted and she disappeared. Zina Meghama. Now, her video went viral a couple of days ago. She got up. She finally got a chance. She, she was abducted, raped, married off, converted to, I think she was converted to Islam by the beautiful Muslim brother, Qasim Kashkeli. Now, a couple of days ago, she got a chance to escape, uh, not escape the house. She got up on the roof of her house because she wasn't even allowed to leave her room. She got up on the roof of the house and she yelled at the top of the lungs that I've been kidnapped, I've been abducted, I don't want to be here. I've been repeatedly raped. 
Um, she yelled out and then some neighbors, and I'm surprised they actually did that, they took her to the police station. And that's where she gave the statement. Um, and uh, this was uh, there was a video of that as well, but um, obviously I'm not playing that, it's in Cindy language. Um, and um, yeah, 15 days ago, she was abducted from her marriage ceremony yesterday, a video gone viral, went viral, where she raised voice for help. Police took both police station and again, Hand over to abductor. Oh, she was hand, handed over back? No, nah, that's not true. Oh, they did. Oh, my goodness. I missed the clip. I missed this part. I thought, I thought that now she's been handed back to her husband. She's been handed back to her Muslim husband. The last photo of, is of her in police where she has been forced to say that she's happy with him. I feel so embarrassed. She actually was returned. She was forced to go back. I saw the video. She was hysterical. She got up on the roof and she said, I, I'm, I'm, I was abducted. I'm not a Muslim. I was forcefully converted to Islam. And then, uh, yeah, police said, go back. Go back to your husband. So many sad stories today. The Church of England is to review thousands of monuments in churches and cathedrals across the country that contain historical references to slavery and colonialism, with some expected to be removed. Guidance to be issued this week encourages the Church of England's 12,500 parishes and 42 cathedrals to scrutinise their buildings and grounds for evidence of contested heritage and to consult local communities on what action to take. Although discussions will be made at a local level, the guidance stress stresses that ignoring contested heritage is not an option. Among actions that may be taken are the removal, relocation or alteration of plaques and monuments or the addition of contextual information. In some cases there may be no change. The guidance comes after Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, called for a review of the C of E's built heritage following the Black Lives Matter protests last summer and the toppling of a statue of slave trader Edward Colston in Bristol. Some statues and monuments will have to come down, Welby said at the time. An anti-racism task force set up by the Archbishops of Canterbury and York last month, urged the C of E to take decisive steps to address the legacy of its involvement in the slave trade. It said, We do not want to unconditionally celebrate or commemorate people who contributed to or benefited from the tragedy that was the slave trade. Announced in the Queen's speech on Tuesday, May the 11th, a public consultation will be held before gay conversion therapy is banned in England and Wales. The consultation will consider religious freedoms and how professionals such as therapists can be protected. Conversion therapy, also known as cure therapy, is the idea that someone's sexual or gender identity can be stopped or suppressed, sometimes through dangerous and unethical practices. In 2018, the government said a ban on conversion therapy was a top priority as part of an action plan focused on improving the lives of LGBT plus people in the UK. Despite being condemned by the NHS, it has taken a further three years for today's public consultation to be announced. We will ensure medical professionals, religious leaders, teachers and parents can continue to be able to have open and honest conversations with people, Equality Minister Liz Truss said. As a global leader on LGBT plus rights, this government has always been committed to stamping out the practice of conversion therapy. We want to make sure that people in this country are protected, and these proposals mean that nobody will be subjected to coercive and abhorrent conversion therapy. 
Alongside this legislation, we will make new funding available to ensure that victims have better access to the support they need. In April, the government's LGBT panel of advisors was disbanded after three members quit after claims that officials were dragging their feet with regards to the pledge to ban conversion therapy. Jane Ozan, the first LGBT plus advisor to resign, tweeted after the Queen's speech, I am relieved to hear that measures will be brought forward to ban conversion therapy. However, the government risks creating a highly dangerous loophole if it chooses to focus purely on coercive practices. Most LGBT plus people in religious settings feel it is their duty to submit to those in authority and will therefore willingly follow their leader's advice even if it causes them great harm. The government needs to implement what the UN and senior religious leaders have called for, a full ban on all conversion practices, which includes religious practices. We do not need yet more delay. We have consulted long enough. We now need action before more lives are lost. The impact of spending three years in conversion therapy meant that I lost key parts of my life. I lost the ability to experience joy, happiness and, and calm. I realised I was gay quite young um, and didn't see anyone like me in the community that I grew up in. I found a website online offering new alternatives to homosexuality. At the time I thought, oh wow, a solution. For me, the talking therapy in the conversion you know, practice context was talking about moments in my life where I felt less masculine, highlighting areas of this kind of feeling of brokenness or lacking. I became obsessive. Every thought, every feeling, every action was monitored. And it was exhausting. I wasn't living my life. I was living through the lens of how can you not be gay? How can you change yourself? You're wrong, you're terrible. And what effect do you think this has had on you long term? I'd like to say that I'm one of the lucky ones. Many people self-harm and end up being suicidal after conversion therapy or are physically abused. I, I spared that experience, but the psychological abuse um, still lingers. I have the opportunity to hear stories from people who experience and experience conversion therapy now. Often it's in the guise of prayer or spiritual guidance. And that's heartbreaking to know that people are still experiencing this and still seeking this out with no accountability for it. Makes me really, really sad. A new bill that proposes to replace compulsory religious worship in English schools with inclusive assemblies will be considered in the UK Parliament after being drawn ninth in the House of Lords Private Members Bill ballot today. The Education Assemblies Bill was tabled by the All-Party Parliamentary Humanist Group. Vice Chair Baroness Burt with support from Humanist UK. Since it was drawn ninth, the bill is likely to be debated over the coming year. If it receives sufficient support, it could theoretically become law. The bill will introduce a requirement for schools to provide assemblies that develop the spiritual, moral, social and cultural education of all pupils, regardless of religion or belief. That will replace an existing requirement for daily compulsory collective Christian worship. In fact, the bill proposes that no compulsory acts of worship or other religious observance should be organised by schools. Stay tuned to this channel for the live show Ask an Atheist with guest ex-pastor Tim Sledge starting in about 10 minutes. We will be back with our weekly news review on all our platforms at the same time 
next week. Please like, share, comment, set the notifications, etc. Thank you for watching. Thank <music> you.